All right, so it's about time to get moving here. I know some more people will probably be jumping in um, as uh, as I get moving, but early on time, on time is late. So let's start get moving. Uh, so today's topic that I'm gonna cover here is real core values with AI assist. For those of you who like to use chat GPT, um, probably there's a lot of other AIs that can help you with this. And really the, the idea here is we're going to create meaningful values that drive your organization forward, right? So maybe starting at the beginning here, talking a little bit about core values. Then we're going to talk about the types of core values that are out there, um, how to kind of use core values in your organization. And throughout this entire presentation, if you have questions, please interrupt me. Please drop them in the Q&A. I like it to be interactive. Otherwise, I'm just kind of talking to a blank camera up there. But anyway, here we go. So I like to start this off with this Jim, just Jim Collins statement here. For those of you new, who don't know who Jim Collins is, he is the author of Good to Great. Um, <coughs> sorry, it's not the content of a company's values that correlate with performance, but the strength of conviction with which it holds those values, whatever they might be. And I think that's the, the key takeaway statement when you're doing core values. It's, it's holding those values, whatever they may be, creates the culture. So a little bit about me. I'm George Morris. I'm a certified scaling up coach and implementer. I've been at this for a little while. Uh, my clients range anywhere from a million to 130 million. That's quite a gamut. I've uh, been an entrepreneur for 20 years, former president of EO Colorado, and father of two teenagers, which is why I have the grays on my face. Um, anyway, um, how many of you actually have stated core values? I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll real quick, just to kind of get an idea. How many of you have core values that are stated, core values known by everyone? If you could just fill that out real quick, just kind of a curiosity. All right, Let's see what we got. All right. A little bit of a blend. We got quarter of you saying kind of, but we don't really refer to them. We got a quarter saying, yeah, we eat, sleep, and breathe them. And then half of you, yeah, sometimes we launch, some, some, sometimes we use them. That's kind of how we fall out there. So most of the times when I see core values, companies have them written down. They sit somewhere in the company. People kind of know what they are, but they don't eat, sleep, and breathe them. And I hope by the end of this presentation, you think about core values a little bit differently than what you're currently thinking about them now. The way I look at core values is they are the fundamental piece of your culture. These are the words that create the, the basis of your language. Your language is going to create the actions and your actions are going to create your culture, right? So I, I think of a great, ex, a, a great example. This is actually a, a really bad example, um, but it serves to tell the point. When the United States um, came into, when the Americans came in, when, they, when the Europeans came into the United States, they were confronted with the Native Americans. And one of the things they did after they took over the United States was send Native American children to Indian schools, is what they called them. And what they tried to do is beat their language out of them. And when they did that, and they took away their language, they also destroyed their culture, because they had no subtext for story. They had no... They had no way to tie their history together because they had no language. They were adopting the conqueror's language and it destroyed their culture. So what we see is a remnant of their culture today. So I, I use that story to show that the words you use and how you use them and how you tie them together is, is critical to building a strong company. Um, and speaking of strong companies, I'm going to give you a couple of examples here, and you don't need to go throwing anything in the chat for this. I just I, I'll go through them kind of quickly so you can kind of see what core values look like. So when you think of communication, respect, integrity, and excellence, is the first company you think of when you read these? Is it Enron? Does does Enron jump out as being integrity and excellence and respect and communication? My guess is probably not. Um, same thing with integrity, boldness, teamwork, and customer service. Oof, those are just strong, hit the hardcore values there. And I'm sure you think of Kmart when you think of those, or this security, trust, and innovation. I mean, we could generically apply that to just about any technology company out there, but this time it belongs to BlackBerry. And if 
if you look at the commonality in all of those, they're one word statements, they're very generic, and uh, they don't really distinguish the company, right? So Booz Allen did this study with the Aspen Institute, and they came back and said, integrity is in 90% of company core values. They were looking at Fortune 500 here. 88% um, had customer focus or customer support, and the other 78% employee focus. So those core values show up all the time. And if your core values aren't differentiating you, they're probably not strong core values. I love this comic I came across, um, just kind of telling the story here. So why do you want to work for a company? Money. Really? That's your only motivation? Well, why does your company hire people? Uh, to make more money. End of conversation, right? You're going to attract a certain type of person to your organization. And in this case, I really like to point to Elon Musk. Right. So he came in in Twitter. And when he came into Twitter, he changed the entire culture of the company. He basically said to everybody, look, you might be sleeping at your desk tonight. You're going to be working possibly to 11 o'clock. You might not be paid as much. And by the way, see you with your vacations. If you like to work here, that's great. And there's no guarantee. So even if you put all that time and hours into it, eh, you might not be here in the long run. I would walk. I'd be gone. I'd be out of that organization. Likewise, a lot of people did. But I guarantee you, there were plenty of other people that submitted their job application to say, yes, that's the company I want to work for. So when your core values are clear, you attract the right kind of people. You retain the right kind of people. They are your building blocks. We start with the core values, and then we get into how do we promote people? How do we hire people? How do we align people? Who are the people that we fire? When we have well-implemented values, they become that positive building block for a high performance culture. So we'll get into that here in a minute. If you don't have core values listed or you refer to them once in a while, what I would suggest is you have a accidental culture. It's not intentional, it's accidental. It's usually the DNA of the founder gets sprinkled to everybody because the founder acts a certain way, treats people a certain way. They're not written down, they're not intentional. So it's just, hey, this is the kind of way we do things. It's an accidental culture. It was not intentional. Now. By contrast, I think this example, because of the words it's going to use, this example will stick out to you and you'll immediately know who this is. And these are not core values per se, the way that I would write core values, but they're value statements. And you can see here, serve with honor and integrity on and off the battlefield. I think you're probably going to get tipped off on who that might be. Um, train for war, fight to win, defeat our nation's enemy. Take responsibility for your actions and the actions of your teammates. And the tip off is earn your trident every day. So this is the U.S. Navy SEAL code. If it's good enough for them, I, I think having a code is probably good enough for the rest of us mere mortals, right? So their code is so important to them because it aligns them. I mean, the Navy SEALs are the embodiment of what it means to have a high performance culture with very high trust and very high accountability. They take this shit seriously, so should you. Patrick Lencioni, so many people know him as the Five Dysfunctions author, and I love what he says here. Core values are deeply ingrained principles that guide all of a company's actions. They serve as a cultural cornerstone. Fist bump there to good old Patrick Lencioni. So let me give you an example here for a second. So. Kind of get away from the theoretical, getting more into like, how does this work? So if you have good core values and you have a few people on your team that you consider to be high performers or people that you want more of, what I suggest you do is do this little matrix, this little test. So if I had two people on my team, theoretically named Jill and Matt, and I say, these are my two top performers, I'm going to apply my core values to them and check boxes. What I want to see is that my core values line up with these high performers. So in the case of Jill, boom, 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 boom. She checks all four boxes. So I feel pretty good about those core values lining up with Jill. Matt, he's missing one of the values. Not the end of the world. But then I have to ask myself, can I teach Matt? Can he, can he evolve to become more or embody more of this core value? We'll see, you can do this over time and you see, you test it. So you test your core values against your team. I want more Jills. Now, if I have another person I put up on here and I name him Jorge, 
and Jorge only gets one of my core values, then eh, probably not a high performer, probably not lining up with my team. Jorge needs to go hit the door because he's not really probably a good culture fit here in the organization. And as you start to do this, this exercise here, this will help you work into things like figuring out who are the A players, B players, C players. So in my example, you know, I have a core value statement, question the default, serious fun. I have a core value and then I have a core value statement. And so I'm, I'm talking about what this looks like. Pay attention, be rigorous and encourage youthful wonder, right? So seriously fun, right? Like a child serious. You see a, you see a six-year-old playing with Legos and they got their tongue hanging out and they're fully engrossed. That's seriously fun. That's what I want to see with my team, right? So this is how you start to clarify those core values. So we're going to segue here for a second. How are they created? How do we actually get to core values? And this is where we're going to go through a little uh, little AI usage, little analog way of doing things here too. So we're going to write them down. We're going to try to get the core values and embody them. What I would suggest you do if you want to play along with me on this is that you get a piece of paper and you create three columns. You create organic, core, and aspirational. And so what I would have you do if you wrote these three columns down, and, and again, I'm recording this. So if I'm going too fast, don't worry. I'll send you the link. You can watch it again and, and go through this exercise. So we're going to start with organic. And organic core values are things like you hear from the customer all the time. Or if I grabbed, if I have no core values and I grab my top three to five employees, um, you know, even if one of those employees is a B player, I, ideally I want A players, but if they're like a B plus player, okay, we'll put them on there just to kind of get an idea of what the core value is, but list the attributes, right? So um, say Jill has critical thinking and so does Jorge have critical thinking. Then I would say one of my attributes in terms of an organic value is critical thinking. Um, what would someone have to do to be immediately fired, right? Because that means they're crossing a principal line that you have and that you will not tolerate. And so therefore, you know, that's a value. That's a strong value if they can get immediate, immediately fired. And I'm I'm not talking about like um, gross, gross negligence, right? I'm talking about if you catch an employee lying to you about something, or you catch an employee um, saying they did something and it was of significance and they didn't do it. Uh, you know, so again, lying, um, or they're putting blame on someone else and they're not owning it. And they're pushing all that blame on to somebody else. Yeah, probably not gonna probably not gonna meet the threshold for me. They might be finding themselves out the door after the uh, second warning. So think about your values that way. What are the things that are showing up for you? And you make a list of them. So you put that down that left column of organic values. Another quote I'm gonna throw in here real quick. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would actually come up with our values from day one. Tony Shea of Zappos, which definitely built a kick-ass culture, but he's saying he would have done this on day one. That should tell you something about how important these things are. Anyway, going back to the going back to the paper. On the right side of the paper, I have your aspirational values. So these are things that you would like to see more of in the company that you aren't seeing right now, or maybe you just see them in hints throughout the organization. So like, um, Maybe I have a value where I want more intellectual curiosity and my team's kind of there, but not really. And I need that if I'm going to hit my audacious goal, my BHAG, my North Star, whatever you want to call it. I need more of that, or I believe I need more of that to build an organization to grow the company rapidly. That's going to be an aspirational value. I'm going to list them down the right side of the piece of paper. Now, I would argue that most companies can create a pretty long list of organic value. The aspirational ones are a little harder to get to. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. You have your organic, you have your aspirational. And this is where I'm gonna segue for a second here. And we're gonna start using a little bit of AI to help us along here. Because if you're a coach and you're working with a team, this can take a couple hours to get to when you're collecting all the post-it notes from everybody, um, you know, your team members or your client, whatever it might be, you know, you're pulling from a bunch of different areas. It takes time and uh, there's ways that we can speed that up. So what I do is I use chat GPT and let me give you an example of how this would look with GPT. 
So what I have here, and again, uh, I will share these out. Now, when I share these, these docs out, the Google Doc, the Google Sheets, any of the stuff that I share out, um, you can grab my formulas that I have in here, but you're going to need to get your own API key. The tool that I'm using here is called Google GPT. It's a plugin. It's an extension that runs in Google Suite, not Chrome. It runs in Google Suite. And so you have to have a paid account with ChatGPT. You're going to need to get the API key, and you're going to need to drop it in. It's going to sit here under extensions, GPT for Sheets right here. And you can set your API key. We're not going to get into that stuff right now. We're not going to get into how to set this up, how to get your API key. Uh, that's for another time. There's plenty of tutorials online that can help you with this. But I want to give you an example of how this works. So in this example, I have a query that I've written. The green is text that is generated on the fly by ChatGPT. So in this case, I said my company name, George Morris Scaling Up Coaching. This is in a nutshell what I do. I say I'm an executive coaching and I pick my voice. You can write whatever you voice you want, but these are the ones that I typically enjoy. So I put them in here and I say, what's the tone that I want to set in this? Am I rebellious, positive, fun, playful? I like rebellious. So I'm going to go with rebellious. And then I say, I want four core values generated from this along with the list of actions. And you're going to see here, this is what GPT generated for me. Challenge the status quo, foster authenticity, embrace discomfort. I actually think I'm going to steal this one. I actually really like that. That might become my fifth core value because I really like it. In fact, since this was generated, I'm going to take a snapshot because I don't want to lose that. <laughs> Next call, I might have embrace discomfort. Uh, create impactful change, right? This is great. And it goes through and it talks about, we believe in the power of transparency and vulnerability. ChatGPT wrote that. And then I said, okay, what can I call my team members, my employees? Well, we can call them the, the growth gurus, the scaling specialists. These were just fun examples that ChatGPT generated on the fly. And then I said, score it from an emotional standpoint. Are these core values are like, do they hit the heart? And I, I, I get the irony in this. I'm asking an AI to tell me how a human might feel about those core values. And it does the best job it can. It's like, I think these would have like a 90% resonance with people. I actually find that the score that it gives you is actually pretty good. Uh, thank you. This is amazing. Yeah, I th thanks for that. Um, yeah, so I, I'll get back to it. There's more amazing. Stay tuned. So then the next piece is actions to live by, right? So now this is saying challenge the status quo. And then I have GPT saying, give me four actions to live by that embody challenge the status quo. And so here's what it generated. So you can see kind of how this works on the fly. Again, I will clean this up a little more. I'll share it out to all of you. Um, I'm going to give you a live example of how we go ahead and change this. So in this tool that I've created, uh, I have a toggle here because every time you run one of these queries, it's a it's a request to ChatGPT. And with a paid version, you have a limited uh, limited amount of queries you can run. Uh, in a three hour period. I think it's 25 queries for ChatGPT4 that you can run. Now, I will say in the plugin, it runs ChatGPT 3.5, not four. Um, so you have more of an unlimited a number of queries, but I have this built in because when I can get to the version four beta with the plugin, I wanna be able to, to regulate the queries. Um, I got a question, how hard is it for a tech person to set this up? It's not, it's really not hard. In fact. Uh, I, I, I'll find a video. Here, I'm going to make a note real quick. So sorry. I'll find a video um, on the plugin and how to do it. I'll share that out. So I just made a note. I'll share that out with everybody here on the call. But let's go through and, and we're going to have it regenerate all of this. So we're going to leave my variables the same. And we're going to say, you know what? Let's use, um, let's use Seth Godin. He's a fun one. Um, and then let's go, oh, my toggle set at one. Let's set that at zero. Okay. And you can see waiting for toggle pops up here. And I'm going to say, let's change the tone to um, playful. That sounds good. I want this time three core values. And yes, I would like a list of actions. Okay. So I'm taking all of this and I'm sending it to GPT. If I click in this green cell, this is going to be hard for you all to read over Zoom. But if you see, there's a query up here at the top. This is my query that's running. And all it does is it just 
it just ties together the various cells to create a statement to push to GPT. GPT gives me the response back. So when I click this button here by putting a one in, toggle's gonna run, GPT is gonna do its job. There we go. Now you can see it's loading. I'm gonna let that run for a second. Ah, so it, it came back with the growth gurus because I, I do have caching enabled on this. So it didn't see my name change in terms of the business. It left that up there. Emotional score is now going to load because it's got the core values. So it takes a little bit to run. And the livable actions is a bit of a delay too because it's waiting for the core values to come in. So in the spirit of Seth Godin, saying playful, adventure seeking accountability, radical authenticity, and playful innovation. There you go written like Seth Godin or an approximation of Seth Godin. And then over here are the actions to live by for that. So that's how that worked. Um, I, I like these actions to live by, but what I'm, and I, I wanted to kind of give an idea of what that core value generator would be. I would propose that this is not something you use and you take out of it and say, boom, this is what you have as core values. Instead, use it to get you 80% there. Think of the Pareto principle. I want you to get 80% to where you need to go. And then you take these things and you give it to the team. We're gonna go back to the slide here in a moment. Um, but what I wanna show you is an extension of the worksheet. So when we go back to the worksheet, this worksheet right here, what I wanna show you is how to get to this by using uh, this Google doc I've created with GPT. So I've created a new tool here. And in this case, what I want you to do is I want you to ask the same questions that I had in the slide deck. So list out the things that you love about your team. So I listed a couple in here as prompts. What actions would you and your team disapprove of? Again, listed that in here. What are the positive things customers say about your business? There. What are the positive things your team says about the business? List them there. And then the black area here is, what things do you want the team to embody in the future? Those are your aspirational, right? So you can see it's waiting for prompt. It's it's set, it's ready to go. I come up here and I'm gonna put the number one up in the top. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna run and it's gonna generate a value based on that statement, right? So I'm gonna put one in here. And again, you can use these tools with your teams, your clients, whoever. I'll share them out. I hope you enjoy them. All right, so not doing what you said you would do, right? So that's a that's a line that you would cross. The core value generation is keeping promises always, lying to the team, transparency above all else. So it's generating the values based on the quality statements that I've given it. And you'll see here that there's there's more stuff underneath here. Now I have my candidates for core values. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put a one in in whatever row is here to basically nominate several core values. So I'm gonna pick this one, this one. I like that one. Uh, let's do promptitude with passion. I don't, I don't know, we'll, we'll play with that one. Uh, our voice matters, got that twice. So I think I probably wrote one pretty similar. And then I'm gonna say, uh, Heartfelt informed leadership. Hell yeah, that sounds good. I'm going to pick that. Experience team, too generic for me. Okay, so now what it did is it indexed all of them. I have my candidates for core values here. And then I'm going to change it up a little bit. This you can type in whatever you want. I like Charles Bukowski. He's a bit of a rebel. And I want to write a statement that, that helps embody that core value. So here I'm going, I'm going to drop a one in here. Boom. Now we get the statements that get generated from that in the spirit of Charles Bukowski. So we are committed to exceeding our clients' expectations and delivering exceptional satisfaction in all aspects of service, right? So it, it gives you that generative core value statement that I can then take back to the team. And while I'm at it, if I'm curious and I want to know, hey, what would it look like if we actually embody things? What were the actions to live by for any one of these things? I go to this cell. And I type in the location of it that I want it to toggle. So what would be uh, reliable and responsive? What would that be? So I can see that's D5. That's the cell I'm entering. I go in here, I hit D5. Now give it a second. This toggle for whatever reason seems to take a little longer. 
I still working out the kinks in this particular toggle. There it goes. So the statement, our organization values being reliable and responsible actions, establish clear communication channels, implement a system for regular check-ins, prioritize timely follow-up and resolutions. Boom, ChatGPT just got us 80% to where we need to go. I'm gonna take all of this stuff, I'm gonna wrap it up and we're gonna move it to the next step. So um, before I go jumping into the next step of what do you do when you get all this good stuff? Um, do we have any questions from people? I, I, I know I hit you with a lot. I know I'm gonna give you the recording, but any questions thus far before I move to the next step in this process? Give you a second to write them out if you got them. Otherwise, I'm just gonna plow on. Bueller, oh, we got one. Uh, we'll get the sheets to play with, you absolutely will. So excuse me uh, when I share them out, I will share them, but I can't make them writable because if I make them writable, people are gonna get in there and mess them up. So I'm gonna share them out as, a, as, a, as an open link. You should be able to duplicate them on your own and then set up the API keys with them so that you can play with it on your own. So I'll have all of that in the email that you can get to it and you can play with any one of these things. All right, so let's go back to the analog. We made this list up. Now, here's where you can work with GPT. If I have a list that's on a piece of paper, awesome. I go to GPT, I write in my core values here. I have my list of core values, or if you're doing it the analog way with writing or post-it notes, you just kind of pull them over and you pick the ones that are your candidates. What I would say is you don't want to have more than any than more than 12 potential core values that we're gonna go ahead and distill, okay? So now this distillation process looks like this. And this is where we get out of ChatGPT, we go back to the old human systems, right? What I would do is I would write down any one of the candidates, the 12 candidates or less that you have for core values, and you'd create a whiteboard chart that looks like this. Emotion on the left, authenticity on the bottom, 10 and 10. And I would suggest you take the post-its and you plot them up on the wall quietly as a team. And the quiet thing really matters. If you go watch the TED Talk, uh, Draw Toast, um, that, that will explain why you do this silently. But you walk up to the board as a team, a leadership team, and you move them around. And you just say, oh, this one's really authentic, meaning I can see it in the organization. It's, it's embodied by the people in the organization. And emotional, the higher the emotional quality of the core value, the more memorable it's going to be, the more actionable it's going to be. So you want high emotion, high authenticity. And so what we're going to do is plot them up on the board. And we're going to start with this area here, this quadrant, whatever 12 you have, whatever you end up with in that top quadrant, that's what we're going to stick with. Those are going to be your real core value candidates. We're going to pick three to five of them. And yes, that's a Goldilocks range. I have found and research backs it up that if you have more than five core values, once you get to six, you start, you're going to start losing people. They're not going to remember your core values. So keep it less. If you have anything less than three, it doesn't really mean a lot. Two core values is not enough. So we want Goldilocks. We want three to five core values. When you have them on the board, the next step is you want to marinate them like a good rabbit in a stew. And this is a dated joke, I know, but... Put the rabbit in the stew. And what you want to do is take the nominations that you have as core values. Again, go back to a whiteboard, write them out, and let your team give your feedback on the values. Stress test them. Ask people, what does it mean in terms of this value? What does it mean to us? Might, how might it look in action? How might this core value be misinterpreted? So for instance, if we come across a core value that says, we firmly believe in work-life balance, Okay, great. But if my organization's working 60 hours a week and we live, lead with a core value of we really believe in work-life balance, that might mean that we're not going to work 60 hours a week. We're going to work 40 hours a week. And is that really what you want to embody in your culture? Or do you want a core value that says we work our asses off morning, noon, and night, and we hope you join us, right? That might just be a true statement. So go with it. So stress test them, put them up on the board, get feedback, and then you'll start coming up with core values that really work. Filter it down to those five that you need. And then 
this is kind of optional, but I also like to do a, another another level of matrix, another level of filtering of the core values to get to strong, strong core values. My favorite example, and it's widely used in the scaling up community as an example, is Atlassian. Um, they're a software as a service company. Um, and these are their core values. Open company, no bullshit, build with heart and balance. And don't take my word for it. Go over to Atlassian and go to their core values page and just look at how people are living these core values. Like their employees love this stuff and they live it, they breathe it. It's all over their materials. It, it's it's evident everywhere. Um, and so when you're strong with your core values, it gives you a kick-ass building block for building a great culture. But what I like to do with this is I like to use this example of real. So going back to this, is it relevant, emotionally engaging, authentic, and livable? And by livable, I mean, can you point to it daily throughout your organization? Can you point to people living the core values? So we create another matrix up. I list the core value statements here on the side, and I put stars or check boxes next to whichever ones are relevant, emotionally engaging, authentic, and livable. So this example that I did with HubSpot. Back to Mr. Lencioni, if you're not willing to accept the pain that real core values incur, then don't bother going through the trouble of formulating values. And I say amen to this, because if you're not willing to fire people for the core values, they don't mean anything, right? So don't bother doing it. You need to live and die by your core values. And, you know, it's funny. I had a client that actually um, looked at me kind of awkwardly when I wanted them to do a core value exercise. I'm like, yeah, you're going to hire and fire by this. And they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. It sounds kind of cheesy. After a month and a half of doing core values and doing them right, he fired two people and he got really pumped up about it. He's like, those two people had to be gone. And, and, I, and I finally had a tool for me to point to, to get them out of the company. And he's like, and now everybody I hire, I'm going through a core values and we check with them with the core values at the end of the interview because we don't want them gaming us for our core values. And he like lives it. He went from my skeptic to like my biggest fanatic of core values. Um, I wish I could mention them as a client. So, you know, the actions to live by when we have the core values that we generated from ChatGPT or if you generate them yourself, I like this from Citibin. You know, they took a bunch of actions that they've created and these are embodiments of the core values they stated. They try to put this throughout the organization so that everybody gets a sense of what the culture is like. They have cool, not cool. That's a campaign. This was wrapped around a quarterly theme that they had. Um, an employee who understands a core value is 51 times more likely to be fully engaged in work. And this came from Harvard Business Review. Uh, what was that? 2018, an article from 2018. Google it. You can find the article. Um, lastly, to kind of wrap up here, how I like to use them, I create a quarterly conversation with employees and I suggest my clients do the same, where each quarter, we're just going to go through and we're going to look at the core values. We're going to talk about what's working for you, what's not working for you. What can I do better as a manager or coach to help you along? And I'm going to go through each quarter and I'm going to check or minus or slash means skip. It's kind of in the middle on any one of the core values. And we're going to have a talk about that. So I may come to you in, in Q1 and say, be the change. You know, you kind of going to get a minus on this because you complained a lot. You didn't go own it and you didn't do anything about it. I'd like you to change that in Q2. Hey, guess what? They got a plus. Q3, they got a plus. Cool, we made change, right? So it allows us to have the quarterly conversation to embody the core values and instill them in the organization. Um, there's also other KPI stuff that I throw in here. If you wanna download it, go ahead and scan that QR code. I'll leave that up there for a second. I'll also give you the deck so the QR code will be in there. You can download the template that I have for the quarterly conversation. And lastly, does anyone have questions? I can go back into GPT and I can show you a few things if you've got questions. I have a few minutes, I'll hang here. If I don't get any questions, we'll just wrap up. And again, I'll get the recording and I'll, I'll put that live. But I really hope this was informative. I hope it was eye-opening. I hope it got you thinking a little bit different about core values. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to reach out to me, just go to the website and get my contact information and reach out. Happy to go ahead and, and do this exercise again with you if you'd like. So 
Awesome. Well done. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Doesn't look like there's any other questions popping up. So um, I hope oh, I'm doing this manually with a client right now. Yeah. Well, I'll take my sheet uh, once I share it out and play with it, get you to 80% there and do all the heavy lifting, lifting with chat GPT. It'll really help a lot. Um, and if you do it, I'm also curious to hear your feedback. If any of you go ahead and use GPT for core values. Anyway, thank you all. Uh, I look forward to doing this again next time. I'll be doing this whole workshop, uh, another iteration of it uh, in June. So look for a date from that. Anyway, everybody have a great day. Thank you for hanging in there. And we'll talk soon, I hope.